let's go ahead and take a look at the sales module. So when you log into the sales module, what you see is a sales dashboard typically. And in that sales dashboard, you see the items that you're currently working on. And depending on whether you're actually a salesman or a manager, you get a slightly different view. If you are a salesman, you're going to see your current leads that you're working on. You're going to see them charted out. You can break down any of these charts and drill down into them. We'll go over that in a minute. You typically see your recent phone calls that you've had. So you can basically know and remember where you left off, what's in your pipeline and your opportunities. There are numerous dashboards that give you a picture of what's going on, but this is the sales dashboard. If I'm a manager and I have numerous people reporting to me, I'm going to see this broken up by the people that report to me. So typically, if I'm looking at a specific work item, you open up that work item, you can always click show all and go to a view. And this, when you do show all, you get in, you're starting to get into also a little bit of an AI because what's happening now is we, jumped, you saw we automatically jumped into the Excel sales Excel accelerator. And I've clicked on a specific lead. So because I've clicked on a specific lead, it's showing me what's happening next, what the score of this lead is, what we know about them, what the relationships are with them, what the most recent activities are with them so that we can continue to constantly work the sale and improve the sale. In addition, we have our detail screen that shows us a description, the contact information, the company information, the description if we've entered one, and what their preferred met contact methods are that if we know them. Our relationships analytics take us in really, this combines our AI with our activities and it gives us some predictability. So we can see that we've had four phone calls with them. So far, we've spent about an hour. It will take about two hours more to respond to the existing emails that are sitting and waiting for me. And my rate of response is 5% higher compared to the customer's rate of response to me, which means I have to do something to improve that. The relationship, this is AI telling me that over our interactions, the relationship is constantly improving because these statistics are constantly growing. So if you look at the chart that is offered from the AI, you'll see that our, from an email perspective, there's been two emails so far. There's been two meetings with the customer so far. There's been six phone calls so far. While on the in the other initiated by customer interactions, there's been one email, one meeting they asked for, and two phone calls that they made. So this is constantly keeping me aware of how we're doing, but it's also keeping us aware of the cog on this sale, the cost of doing business and the cost of, of, of winning the deal. And you can track the hourly investment. These are very modifiable to our, what we want to track as a customer uh, in our customer relationship. Do we want to look at hourly investments? Some people often ask me to make this the investment ag against the total cog of the deal. And they don't necessarily want to look at it hourly. They want to sometimes look at it weekly. So that's something that we can do. Every aspect of the screen is customizable and modif modifiable. As far as emails, we are tracking not just that we sent an email. We're tracking how many of the emails we sent got open, how many of the attachments, 
and how many times they actually clicked into a link in it. So we're giving a very detailed look at how we're doing with this customer. This is the send and receive ratio. And this is a day over day look at these ratios. Now, the interesting thing in dynamics is you'll see here that you can typically hover over and get more detail. The detail receipt, the detail displayed here is very modifiable. Right now, it's just showing us the quantity received. If we wanted to be able to highlight additional data in that detail, that's very doable. The other thing that you'll see on our lead is a relationship to other aspects of sealing a deal, so to speak. So we can look at the related marketing activities. We can look at the related connections. In other words, this company maybe has a relationship with another company. We can look at, take a deeper look at everything that's changed by looking into the audit history. We can look at daily lead KPI items because we can measure the KPI. And a very important attribute is always the time spent winning a deal. This item is connected to a sequence. So let's go to another item in our work list so you can learn more detail about sequences. I'm going to disconnect the sequence so you can see it. There is a sequence for all new leads that is set up. That sequence is something we create and control. So when a lead is entered in the system as a new lead, we've created a sequence here that says we want new lead nurturing. So that means we want an automated email going out, establishing a relationship possibly, or an automatic notification or an automated activity to one of our salesmen, so it shows up in their queue. And if we manually enter a new lead, we can either trigger that sequence automatically, or we can manually enter a lead and even create a sequence unique to the customer. And you'll see that that sequence, the new lead sequence includes an introductory email, a reminder email, and setting up a call to the customer, a thank you email, and scheduling a meeting with the customer. That happens to be the sample sequence. Once those events happen, as you saw in our previous record, they show up in your timeline. So this particular customer is at a grade B. We know the decision maker. We know the country. It's being purchased in the next quarter but we don't have any information about an estimated budget. So this tells the salesman what they have to work on and do improvements. Additionally to driving success in an individual lead like that, the way the interactions with the dashboard that drive our daily activities also work is in the drill down. So I can go into any of these tables and I can say, I want to look at my deals maybe by estimated value. And I want to see those estimated values maybe in a pie chart. So now I have three deals showing up. And they're showing up by source as well. So you can always also modify the filter that shows these attributes. So any one of these is, is drillable and you can get down into very detailed reporting and attributes right off of the dashboard. You don't need to build a lot of custom reports. It's part of what's of the life cycle. 
The other aspect besides the drill down in the dashboard is that the sales life cycle comes with calendaring so that you can always look in a calendar what appointments you have, what are set up. When you set up a an appointment, it, it this interfaces with your Outlook so that whatever appointments you have in your Outlook are blocked out here and whatever appointments you have here wind up in your Outlook calendar so that you don't have any question and have to be bouncing between Outlook and here to do your work. You can also take a look at your day-to-day -day activities that you need to be doing. And so we can see that I, as a salesman, have a pricing proposal that I'm working on that I have to have reviewed. And I have an open spec document that I need to work on. So those are my responsibilities and my tasks that I set up. And I can use this task board to move things around dynamically to show that I completed it. And what this is actually doing is going and closing the task as completed. You can also go into the task to close it if necessary, but it's a very dynamic relationship. And it's an interact. This is called the user interactive experience, so that everything we do here winds up being drag and drop. Likewise, if I one of the things you know when a salesman breaks for a vacation or a holiday, if he wants to show himself where he actually left off and what he has up and coming, he's got because. The bulk of the life cycle of a salesman includes a lot of phone calls. So we've always give this call history view so that everybody can look at what they've done, what's up and coming to be reminded of what they're doing next. Now let's look at our pipeline. In our pipeline, we have open leads that are assigned to me that need to be worked. I can always drill into one of those leads And again, you'll see here that my lead score will show up. Any of the recent activities show up in the timeline. The lead score shows up. The relationships, who's a part of this company or who they came from, if they were a recommendation, show up. Stakeholders, competitor, competitors show up as well. And, and we are able to continue this through the life cycle. This lead has been active for four days. It's in the qualification process. If there's, you can, once I get the estimated budget in here, which is really important. And I get the purchase process. It could still be unknown. Typically, if I want to promote it, I really do need to know that it's a single person's decision or a committee decision. And I can move it to the next stage by either clicking next stage or doing what's called qualifying the lead. When I qualify the lead, I will click on this button to qualify it. What this is doing is it's automatically analyze, using AI, analyzing the data, creating the new records, creating the account and the contact record, and giving me an opportunity to say, hey, we're ready to do some quotes on this one. So it's adding quotes, it's adding products so that I can actually associate some products to it. <clears throat> if 
there's pricing. The, the system allows for client specific price lists or generic price lists to be picked up. And it allows us to build our quote from here by adding products that are going to be part of the deal. The system has a product app catalog. Typically, customers will integrate this product catalog with their ERP system, but they can also be uploaded. And it's as simple, again, as drag and drop and clicking buttons to get these items added. It's a relational database. So now we can say save these to the opportunity and start building the customer quote. Your price list can be industry specific, they can be customer specific, they vary. So I have my products in here. So let's build a quote for the customer. We'll add a new quote. So I did not, since I had already added my products, I did not have to add anything. So this quote is being prepared for the customer and I can now say, look up address, activate quote. I can get products. I can automate processes that say when you add certain products, add certain service charges or add certain um, estimated um, <clears throat> um, consulting charges, let's say. I can export this to a PDF or I can activate the quote and a lot of clients, <laughs> when you click activate quote, create an auto send of the quote, or at least an auto create of the email that sends the quote for the, for the salesman to verify and see if he wants to customize and add his two cents. Once creating the quote, I can also proceed, I've spoken, I've created the quote. It's been auto and emailed to my customer. My customer has emailed me back that they're very interested. So I can do two, one of two things here now on this quote. I can go back into the opportunity and work it from there. I can, if I got an email back, from the customer saying, oh, I object to these prices. Can you maybe give me a 10% discount? I can revise the quote from here. I can close the quote and create a new one. Everything is very interactive on this screen. Now the quote's been open for edit and I can again manipulate it or I can activate the quote. If a customer has emailed me and said, I'm all for this price, let's go ahead. I can activate the quote and go back to the actual opportunity that I was working. And there are several ways typically to get back to where you left off. There's always a link on the quote to the opportunity. 
I was only a screen away, so I hit the arrow. So now these, if we go back and look at our opportunity again, we can look at our opportunity summary. We would see in the timeline, if an email came in accepting the quote, it would, since the quote was emailed from this record, the response would come right to this record. If there's an external email that went to somebody's Outlook, they'd be able to click on their Outlook and just click a button to link it to this record. So now I've won this deal or I've lost this deal. If I close it as lost, the screen pops up. that says, tell me why you lost it. And you get an opportunity to edit these values to say why you lost it. You either have lost, the, the values that come out of the box is canceled and outsold. You can add any kind of value you want. You can list the competitor. In this case, for our example right now, I'm gonna win the deal. Close it as one. Any revenue on that was one from this deal would actually be written here or I can edit it if it's not inherited. If there was a competitor I can beat out, it would be inherited here and any description I want to add. These are not required fields. You can just close it as one because you can find all that data in the record. Now, there is a quote that's still open on this one, so I can't close it. The system does not let you make mistakes. I did that on purpose so that we could all see that this interactive system is assuring me that I can't make a mistake. And you can also automate the fact that the quote that I closed as one automatically close any previous quote in the system. It's a configuration point. It's not, comp it's not a complicated coding point. So I'm gonna close this quote. Now closing this quote, I'll be able to mark the opportunity as one. The system protects you from making errors. And so that the data remains clean. Now we will close this as one. And again, I'll show you another way now to go back to the opportunity. Instead of using the arrow, it's a click away. And I will close it as one. And if there's anything else that the system wants me to do, it's going to tell me that there's still an active quote. So let's see why that is. Let's actually jump to another lead so I don't have to close out child records. I was just playing around with the quotes there. So instead of having that click into each one and close it, what I'm gonna show you here is qualifying this one. You can also qualify multiple at the same time. So I'm going to just choose one for now. I'm going to say qualify. So now that quote is qualified as one and it's no longer on our list. And you will see that now you have an active contact. All the related records have been generated. The account that I just won was auto-generated just by working 
the opportunity. That would be this one. Every module in Dynamics gives you resources so you can learn more about how it works and teach yourself how to use the system. That's pretty much the sales life cycle. 